Good evening, everybody. My topic today is going to be a man that's very much alive. A man that I don't know personally. I just know what he's giving to the world. And it reminds me a lot of um, Nikola Tesla. It's, and in some ways, you never know that this man could have part of uh, a help from Nikola Tesla. And is Elon Musk. I'm not comparing the two because they're completely different people. What, what, I, what I see is two men that are giving technology to the world that can change the world. It's funny because Nikola Tesla was all about electricity. Elon Musk is all about electricity, a clean energy, so to speak, an unlimited energy. They're both men are very similar. And both men weren't greedy. They weren't patenting all the products to make this all this tons of money. And, and, but they weren't backed by the people at the time. There's only so many times a soul is going to come down to this world that's going to give people a chance before the time expires. And I think Tesla, Nikola Tesla, was one of those souls that came here to try to change the world, but it was too early. People didn't embrace him. They were afraid of him. They were afraid of his technology, and they didn't embrace him. Instead, they stole whatever they think they could make a profit from. Elon Musk, he, if you look at what he's done and what he is doing, it's phenomenal. He has a space program that is trying to best, they say they could never, ever, ever have the rocket boosters to actually land and reuse. So they just never tried to actually invent a technology that they could reuse that. But he did, and, he's, and it's become ex extremely successful. It's also, when I look at Elon Musk, I see issues of the world, overpopulation. He does as well. I don't know this man personally, but I, I have a feeling I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to show people that we need to go to different planets. So he's creating a space program that can bring people to Mars. And then at that point, develop Mars and colonize Mars. And that way we could start going to Mars. A lot of people, so the overpopulation of the world could be balanced out to different planets. That's just one small part. The other part I see is the problem with pollution. He's given us the technology to change everything so we can walk away, completely um, walk away from the oil and gas by giving us cars that are becoming better and better and better on his own. You see, he has very little help. And I'm not saying no business is helping him. What I'm saying is very few businesses are. Why isn't the US government and the Canadian government putting tons of money into his technology so and, and basically telling the auto industry that you need to start changing what you're doing. You need to start using this technology in the vehicles so the pollution will become obsolete. The cars he has now, like if you look at the trucks are amazing. If you haven't looked at the transport trucks he's coming out with, absolutely groundbreaking. 65 miles an hour on a steep grade with 80,000 pound payload, zero to 60 without a load on it in five seconds. This is a transport truck. And you know as well as I do, when you're driving down the street, what's the most annoying thing when you're going up a hill? Is a big lineup of trucks that you can't get by. Well, that wouldn't exist anymore. Those trucks would be going faster than you are. So, or just as fast, so there wouldn't be any nuisance there. And they wouldn't be throwing out big, huge piles of horrible diesel fuel into the, into the, into the air and into the, you know what I'm saying. Some of those vehicles blow up black smoke horribly because they don't properly maintain them. The accidents would be drastically decreased on the highways because of the safety features of his vehicles. Then you move into the car. The cars are phenomenal. They're expensive. But they're phenomenal. But however, he's trying, he has a new Model 3 that's coming out that is, is revolutionary in itself because it's around, it's less than $50,000. It's becoming very affordable. I know there's delays in production and stuff like that, but you got to understand, nobody's backing this man. If anything, to try to prevent him from coming out with this technology. It's very concerning. 
The Roadster, a thousand kilometers on one charge. A thousand kilometers. That's a ground, uh, uh, that's basically um, a game changer, isn't it? A thousand kilometers, zero to 60, in, zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds. And safely zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds. That's the other ish thing. It has so many safety features on it that it prevents you from hurting your own self. That's also important because that type of speed is dangerous but not when you have a vehicle that's designed to be able to do it, which is vehicles are. You fall asleep. There's no accidents. There's so many positive things to his vehicles. Why the hell isn't the government jumping all over this? We all know why, but why as a people are we not standing up and saying, we want this technology to be put in our vehicles. We want this technology. We want to support this type of technology. And then we get into the actual solar energy. He's created solar shingles that are cheaper than regular shingles. And to be honest with you, they look nicer. And he's got beautiful battery walls that are just basically a work of art in themselves. They're a hell of a lot better than an oil furnace and they don't break down like an oil furnace does. So, and we always used to go on about how solar is ugly, like solar panels on a roof are ugly and solar batteries are pain in the ass because you have to constantly fill them up with water and a lot of maintenance. But he made it almost maintenance free. And the shingles now are just as beautiful, if not beautiful than regular shingles are. And the battery walls are lithium batteries that are clean. There's no maintenance on them and the battery walls themselves are beautiful. It's just the lack of support for this man. I find very concerning in the world. Why aren't we taking this type of technology and embracing it? And there's no more excuses. The excuses of saying that, oh, well, the range of the electric cars aren't far enough. They don't work in cold weather and we find out that they work quite well in cold weather, good enough anyway. And, but with the support of the governments, they put charging stations up, that wouldn't become an issue at all. There would be no issue. And people could be driving electric cars all over the place. With, and plus the auto technology, people, there is some glitches that you hear about, but it's extremely rare. And think about this. How many car accidents is every day? And how many car accidents would be vented if we used them cars? So the people go on about how oh, it malfunctioned on this specific spot. Well, how many car accidents there are there in North America? And how many car accidents would there be if everybody owned one of those vehicles? The fender benders would be pretty well completely eliminated. The falling of the sleep accidents with head-on collisions would almost be completely eliminated. So, I don't know, again, I don't know Elon Musk personally, but what the hell is wrong with the world when you don't embrace this technology? And I look at this as another wake-up call. If this man goes bankrupt, what is going to happen to all this technology? How much more time do we have to wait before we wake the hell up and see that a man like this should be the richest man in the world and completely back 100% so he can get these vehicles at all price ranges so everybody can afford them, have battery walls that are cheaper, last longer. We should be putting tons of money into men like this. is because their hearts are developing technology that is to change the world. It's not, Elon Musk isn't doing this to make a shitload of money. He's, he doesn't patent his product. He encourages people to steal his technology. But still, we don't embrace it. Then we get into the tube system. I guess it's like, I don't know a huge amount about this, but it's like a tube that goes, like you can have it all across North America, and you could have it like a subway system if you want it. If you sit inside it, you, you're in like a, 
um, you're in type of, uh, like a capsule, so to speak, and you go through this tube at ridiculously fast speeds because, because there is no, it's like being in space. So there's no resistance. You're in a vacuum. And it almost costs nothing to run. For, you can go from California to New York City at, say, 800, 900 miles an hour. And you could sit down there. You could be putting your feet up, relaxing, having a conversation. Stop anywhere along the way. Go get something to eat. Go back on. Continue on. These technologies, this, but it's all about, oh, it's going to cost this, going to cost this. Come on, people. It's amazing technology. This stuff is, exists. It's not science fiction anymore. This is reality. This is what the world needs to see. We are in a time where we have to make decisions quickly, not wait on our asses. If all this stuff goes belly up and the big corporations come in, the oil companies, they'll push all this stuff aside. I asked the oil companies again, why don't you embrace technology like this? You know gas is on its way out. It's inevitable. If it doesn't, we're just going to destroy the goddamn world. We're going to be living in, in, in some type of dome in order to survive. And all life on this earth will slowly die. This is what your future using oil and gas is going to create. That's if it doesn't run out first. Why are we not embracing this technology wholeheartedly? Why aren't you, as companies that have the, some of the most richest people in the world, why aren't you jumping on this technology and seeing the potential to change the world? You see a dying technology like natural gas, gas, people go natural gas, it's clean, but it's a pain in the ass to get yet. It's expensive. It's annoying and it's also bad for the environment. Natural gas is better than gasoline, don't get me wrong. But is getting it is a problem. Getting it out of the ground. But why aren't we, di why aren't we embracing that technology? It's different if it's like about 100 years ago, 50 years ago, we never really had the technology to be able to do what Elon Musk has done. But now our excuses are taken away. But I also look at it a spiritual way. This man has come here to show us in our face that it's possible to do all this stuff. And we still turn a blind eye, just like we did to uh, Nikola Tesla. We turned a blind eye to him. We took whatever little bit we can make money on and just ignored the rest. How could we possibly want free energy? Why would we ever want that for the world? Why would we ever want an energy that doesn't pollute the air? Pollute the rivers, the oceans. Plastics, don't even get me started on plastics. Why aren't we, we have the technology also now that eliminate all the plastics in the world. To change it with a biodegradable product that is just like plastic, it even feels like plastic, except it breaks down naturally. It has a shelf life, yes, yeah, so what? We shouldn't be keeping stuff in the shelves for two or three years anyway. Who wants to drink bottled water that's been sitting on a shelf for two years? Kind of gross. And not only that, how healthy is it for you? I look at expiry dates of water that are in plastic bottles are like two years even farther sometimes from the date they're bottled. How healthy is that? So back to Elon Musk. He's got the ability, a transportation system that he could put in place that would revolutionize and completely eliminate the use of uh, diesel engines. He's given us technology and continue to work in and develop technology that will eventually get us to other planets. He's given us the ability to have cars that do not burn any type of fossil fuels and living a house with no with basically no relying on fossil fuels he's got a system 
that could have you take you off the grid that is beautiful, sleek, and low maintenance. But still, we don't embrace the technology. Not the level we should. What would happen if everybody in every city across Canada, across the United States, went to their governments and said, we want to embrace this type of technology. We want to change. We want to be able to afford this technology so everybody in North America can basically force the government and a, or a cop, a cop, or automotive industry to start taking this technology on. We want our governments to change this because a lot of people, there is some people say, no, well, blah, 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 blah. But realistically, I don't care anymore. It's got to the point where we have to change. We can't continue to put our heads in the sand and think that everything's going to be okay. It's not. We're destroying so many things on this earth in the name of getting fossil fuels as well as mining. Don't get me wrong, mining cleanly is good. The problem is when you get these th people who go in, destroy, completely destroy whole areas and don't give a shit. That shouldn't happen. All this destructive nature, we could go in a place and mine it and come back into that place and that place would look just as beautiful as they left it. But we don't encourage that. We shouldn't just encourage it, we should make sure that it's enforced. That if you're going to be mining, you're doing this. Even if we have to give these companies a little bit of support in the cleanup process so they can clean it up properly. In the Yukon alone, there was a time where one of the mining places had to, uh, the, the, their tailing ponds were ready to overflow. So the Yukon government allowed something like millions of liters of toxic tailing water into the Yukon River, one of the most pristine rivers in the world, because they would have had to stop operations for a little while in order to clean it up. So stop operations for a little while to clean it up. Why wouldn't you even help that company support the staff so people wouldn't be off work for a week? Or why not give them unemployment for that time that they would have lost work? They lost their wages. There's so many options that we have, but instead they blow ridiculous amounts of money on pointless things all the time. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be angry. I'm trying to get people to understand. And I'm not angry, by the way. But I see that people like Elon Musk are here to change the world, to tell people there's no more excuses anymore. We have the technology to change the world. Now, not 10, 20, 30 years from now. We have it now. We need to embrace this technology. Because if we don't, it's not a good future. A future based on corruption, greed, is not a future that's going to be pleasant for any of us. And I, again, I tell you again, I don't care who you are in this world. You could be the richest person in the world, but you're going to come back to this world. In some form or another, you will come back. And if you're a big oil industry, one of the heads of the biggest oil companies in the world, you're going to come back. Stop fooling yourself. It's not just your kids you should be worrying about, it's yourself. Because you will come back to this world until it's a dust pool with nothing left at all. I don't want to take your money. I want to see you really start caring about the world instead of yourselves. Use your money 
to help people like Elon Musk to change the world. And you'll still make a shitload of money in the process if you're smart enough. But I challenge you guys, all of you that run big corporations that are profited on destruction of the world, to stop doing that and start produ producing things that help develop a world to be a better place. And, and make money from it. Fine, you want to make money, go ahead. I know that's how the world works. I'm not sure when the money stuff will go away. But at this point in time, I'd rather see you guys put your money somewhere what makes a difference instead of on something that is destroying the world. Destroying your children's future and your own future because your ass is coming back to this place. I don't care what you try to convince yourself otherwise, your asses are coming back here. My ass is coming back here in some form or another. And personally, I don't want to come back to a, a dust pool. I want to come back to a place that's thriving with life. Thank you very much. And please, everyone, be good to one another, respect one another. And just because somebody has a lot of money, we should be encouraging them to change the world in a positive way, to try to, to see that guys, instead of trying to tell them, oh, you're gonna burn hell, and gonna shoot you all, stop it. We need to explain to them that there's other ways of doing things. There's other ways to still make money, but also change the world. Elon Musk is one of those people. Thank you very much. And if you wish to do a service with me, you can go to my website at www.almanrossawakening.com. And you can also check my Northern Light page, which is www.josephbradleyroars.com. Northern Lights is a passion of mine. And if you have never seen them, you never will truly understand. And if you see them lightly, mm -hmm. but when you see them explode all over the sky with dancing, moving extremely fast, you'll never forget it. It's just one of those things in nature that you never forget and you find it's, it's mind boggling. And that's what makes me sad when you think of a world where all the oceans are polluted, the, the water systems polluted, a lot of the animals, if not all the animals die off. And we're living in domes and the only thing that we could survive is through filtration systems of the air and the water. We, do we really want a future like that? Do you really want a future like that? And I'm talking to you as well. All these big companies, all the big corporations. Do you really want a future like that because you're coming back, your children are here, they're going to be coming back. Your families will come back. Let's start working together instead of against one another. Thank you very much. Have a great day.